Okay, thank you, Christian. And thank you for joining with the Green Carbon webinar. And I'm Bilani from the Ghent University, Belgium. And today my topic is the Bayeshar as a growing medium constituent and a peat substitute. So in this presentation, I would like to give you an, some overall idea about the use of Bayeshar in a growing mediums. Uh, in this presentation, I would like to talk about the definitions, functions, and properties of a growing medium, and also a commonly used growing medium constituents, and also the role of peat in a growing medium. And also, uh, I would like to talk about the how fits the biosphere as a growing medium constituent, and also as a peat substitute. Um, and then I will look at how uh, the, the biosphere properties will affect the growing medium properties. And I also I would like to discuss about the properties and the challenges uh, related with this topic. So you can define growing medium in as a two different ways. If it, it as a substance through which plant roots grow and uh, extract the water and nutrients, or as a material other than soil on the spot in which plants are grown. So according to the use, you can found uh, three types of growing mediums. Uh, it can be a seed propagation media, or it can be a media for root cuttings, or it can be a transplant media. So uh, in a seed propagation media, we use it as for a seed germination. So it should be sterile enough, and also it should consist with the uh, finer mixture of particles, and also it should contain high moisture content. And for the media for the root cuttings, it should be porous enough to penetrate the roots, and it should have a good aeration to facilitate the plant root growth. And in a transplant media, it will facilitate the uh, post uh, uh, the plant growth and should be coarse enough and have, should have the good uh, nutrient balance and good moisture content and the aeration to facilitate the plant growth. Um, let's look at the functions and properties of the growing media. Uh, growing media should provide the uh, physical support to the plant and it should have a good balance between the aeration and the moisture content, and it also should supply the uh, optimum level of macro and micronutrients. And when you consider about the properties of a growing medium, it should be free of weeds, pathogens, and toxins, and it should be easy to wet, it should not be hydrophobic. And also the growing medium constituents should be homogeneous and the con should have a consistent quality over the crop growth cycles. And also, it should be available to the growers and it should be affordable. And let's look at what are the commonly used growing medium constituents. Uh, in this context, I will go one by one in these uh, constituents. The first one is the uh, uh, peat. It's the uh, most established and the, with the growing medium constituent with the most desirable uh, uh, qualities. And, but the extraction of peat is not maybe not uh, sustainable. And then the coconut core uh, is also very much popular among growers. However, this is also associated with the higher carbon footprint because most of the times this coconut coir is produced in Asian countries and then distributed among the other parts of the world. And this transportation maybe have higher carbon footprint. And also this uh, wood fibers bulk compost materials also using growing mediums. And also in the past studies, they studied the substitution of these materials as a, a substitute for the peat material. And also rock wood, polyurethane also used as a, a growing medium constituent. Uh, however, this, this material also give good uh, physical uh, support to the plants and have a good uh, desirable characteristics. However, the dis disposable, uh, disposability of this material make a lot of uh, environmental concerns. And also, uh, people use perlite, pumice, clay, and vermiculite in order to facilitate the, the good aeration and good moisture content inside the growing medium. So uh, in here, I would like to give uh, a special attention to peat because it's the most, uh, uh, the growing medium constituent with the most desirable qualities. Then let's look at what are the qualities which, uh, which make it as a very good uh, component in a growing media because uh, uh, peat can retain a lot of moisture and also it will reduce the leaching of the nutrients and it will improve the drainage in the medium and also it has a good soil buffering capacity and it has a good uh, cation exchange capacity and it is free of uh, weeds and pollutants and also this peat is quite available and the affordability is higher. 
Um, however, as I mentioned before, this uh, horticultural peat extraction can may lead to the peat oxidation and it may can increase the carbon dioxide and methane emissions and increase the greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. So in 2005, the CO2 emissions caused by this peat decomposition in drain peatlands are estimated to be over 600 million tons per year. So we have a sustainability concern with the uh, peat uh, use in horticultural industry. So we need to find out some non-peat constitute in order to substitute the peat use in horticulture. So in this context, uh, biochar in recently getting increased attention as a growing medium constituent and also as a peat substitute. So in this section, I would like to talk about how biochar fit in this context. Uh, Biochar is a solid product remaining after biomass is heated to temperatures, typically between 300 and 700 under oxygen deprived conditions. So, however, the quality and the quantity of this biochar material is mainly dependent on the nature of the feedstock material and also these uh, biochar production conditions. Mm. <laughs> Bashar is a very well established uh, organic carbon amendment, organic uh, soil organic amendment to improve the plant productivity in the field conditions also. So this is a basis for maybe using as a, as a constitute in a growing medium too in order to increase the crop productivity. And in this slide you can see some examples from the literature too, uh, which uh, provide the uh, evidence to the Bashar as a good uh, soil amendment. So in here, I would like to talk about the, what are the useful characteristics of biochar in, in medium applications. And especially biochar has a high porosity and the specific surface area. So this may be uh, very uh, beneficial in retaining the moisture and the air and also to facilitate the microbe denosome activities. And also the biochar has a low bulk density and also biochar can be manufactured in uh, different particle sizes. So this may be useful in the uh, 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 controlling the biochar, uh, physical uh, characteristics of the growing medium. And also biochar has a high CEC, uh, pH and electrical conductivity, and this is also dependent on the biochar production conditions and the feedstock materials, as I uh, mentioned before. And also biochar can uh, retain the nutrients due to this uh, high cation exchange capacity. And also uh, biochar has a relatively higher stability compared to the other growing medium constituents, so it's resist to shrinkage or the crop growth cycle. And and also biochar has a, 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 a good color, it's a black in color, so it may be useful in the growing medium application, especially as a routine medium. So let's look at how biochar effect on the, uh, in the growing medium properties. Is, um, I would like to give this special focus on the container substrates. Uh, first, I would like to talk about the, uh, what are the physical properties of the growing medium and how biochar affect to the physical properties of the growing medium. So in here, I list a few uh, physical properties of the growing medium, uh, the particle size distribution, bulk density, porosity and pore size distribution, and the water and air retention and water and air transportation. So in this picture, you can see if the medium has a large particles, it can retain a um, lot of air compared to the water, and same as the, if the media contain a lot of uh, smaller particles, it will retain more moisture than the air. So we should have a good balance between the large and the small particles. So first I would like to talk about the particle size distribution and how it affects what by the biochar. Uh, particle size distribution is the main base for the growing medium texture and the structure, uh, especially when the growing medium contains a lot of uh, uh, particles which are uh, do with, its do with many dominance with the particles of several distinct classes. You can see in here, it's like a, if it is the, the particle size distribution is like a step-like distribution. It may have a very uh, poorly graded medium. It, it symbolizes the poorly, grade, poorly graded medium. So, and also for a well graded medium, so you can see the very smooth line and it has so good balance between the small and the larger particles. So the particles range in between the 0.125 and the two millimeters. Uh, the, this particle size range to supply the optimum drainage condition. So poor structure means poor air and solid circulation within the growing medium and may make it may be uh, lead to the poor plant growth. Finally, it is the it's lowering the plant productivity.
So also in this graph, I would like to show you that uh, in here, they studied the how, uh, bit of the, how polite can uh, substitute with the moisture. And uh, in here, you can see for the polite, it has a kind of a step-like distribution. However, the, this moisture B, it should have a very smooth uh, distribution. So it maybe have a very good balance between the aeration and solid, solid, solid circulation in that uh, uh, make it, it will make that medium. So it's it's important to have a, a good particle size distribution inside your medium when you use the biosphere in a growing medium. And when I talk about the bulk density and the uh, air filled porosity and the water holding capacity, I would like to first describe these uh, three uh, um, aspects and the bulk density it will be decided by the manufacturers it will be decided by the particle size of the growing medium constituent and also uh, we have to adjust according to the crop type or container type or size and the growing conditions maybe if it is growing in the outdoor you need a high bulk density compared to the indoor growing and also it's depend on the irrigation type or easiness to handling and air filled porosity is the volume of a material made up of air after it has been fully saturated with water and then allowed to drain under gravity and the water holding capacity or water filled pore space you can define it as the volume or mass of water occupying space within the pores um, in this table in this table, I would like to show you how uh, bulk density, air filled porosity, and water holding capacity is changed with the different biosphere types. Uh, I have to uh, give, a, give a specific attention to a few uh, points in here. In here, you can see even for the same biosphere type, if you use the different ratios of peat and biosphere, it can slightly change the bulk density, air filled porosity, and the water holding capacity and the total porosity. And for the same feedstock, if it is produced under different pyrolysis conditions, also it may be changed like with these uh, uh, physical properties. And also, if it is a different feedstock, also it can have an uh, as, uh, impact on these biosphere physical properties. So you have to choose the best desirable and best fit uh, particle size distribution and these physical properties according to your requirement of the crop. And in here, I'm presenting the uh, moisture retention, how moisture retention uh, in a growing medium affects with the biosphere. And in this uh, first uh, figure, I would like to show you how, with the, how moisture retention is changed with the different uh, growing medium constitutes. In the top one, it is uh, uh, showing the uh, perlite, and the bottom two, it's uh, showing the char and the ceramics. However, in the middle one, you can see the uh, peat and the biochar and a uh, char of uh, 50-50 mixture. And that mixture, when the uh, biochar blend with the peat, you can see there is a high moisture content retention compared to the uh, char only. And also in this uh, condition, in this figure, you can see how uh, increase of the biochar does affect to the moisture retention. When it is increased, the moisture retention is increasing. And then I would like to talk about some uh, chemical properties of growing medium and how biochar affect to the chemical properties of the growing medium, especially pH, electrical conductivity, and how cation and anion exchange capacity and the fertility macro and micronutrients. And the, uh, uh, the the growing medium should uh, free of organic and inorganic contaminants. These are the chemical properties of the growing medium. And this probably you can see how nutrient is availability is changed with the pH of the medium. Uh, first, I would like to give focus of the, on the pH and electrical conductivity. So, if your biochar is made from the very nutrient rich feedstock, it will end up with the high alkalinity, and it can have high ash content. So. Uh, depend on the feedstock, the UP biochar pH will be decided. So also the, depend on the production conditions, your uh, biochar pH will be decided. So you have to pay attention to the pH of your biochar. Maybe depend on the pH, you can maybe use as a limey material uh, to the pH based growing medians. Also in this uh, figure, you can see how uh, uh, increase of the biochar content in the medium affect to the uh, uh, pH of the peat based and the coir based mediums. So it act differently. Normally in the coir based medium, sometimes during the processing of the 
require it make some uh, it as it is uh, associated with some saline water so it maybe can have the uh, impact on having the higher pH compared to the peat based medians because normal peat has an acidic pH and also in this table you can see how for same biochar type also with the different peat and uh, biochar ratios you can see directly the pH is getting very and in here, I would like to show you Bioshore with high pH. It can reduce the land requirement of the um, to neutralize the peat with acidic pH. And when you acidify in the growing medium, it may have impact on germination depending on the acidifying agent. In this table, you can see the uh, the study conducted by the Maturnet et al. in 2017. With the increase in level of the biosphere in the global medium, substrate pH getting increased, and depend on your pH of your biosphere and the pH of your peat, you can uh, adjust it to, to the optimum level. But when you when you use the biosphere with really high alkalinity, uh, it may be it may can increase the pH of the growing medium, maybe more than the desired or optimum level. So in that case, we need to acidify the growing medium. So in that case, maybe this acidifying agent also can have an impact on the uh, germination of seeds. In this study, they showed that how uh, pyrolimages acid, this is the acidifying agent they used and how it affected the germination of the growing medium, germination of the seeds. And, when, it, when I come to the effects of the contaminants in biosphere, um, when you produce a biosphere from a specific feedstock, uh, first you have to check, check for the contaminant level also, for the inorganic and organic contaminants. And there are two guidelines associated with that, the IBI guidelines and the EC guidelines. So you can check the contaminant level of your biosphere and uh, decide whether this biosphere could be used in environmental applications or not. Um, I would like to show you another study conducted before uh, the effect of the uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbon content on the uh, shoot and radical uh, length of the corn seedlings. So they produce six types of biosure and it has a very level of polyaromatic hydrocarbons and they use this the leached and unleached biosure to the medium and test the shoot and radical uh, length of the corn seedlings. And you can see how uh, polyaromatic concent uh, hydrocarbon concentration will affect to the uh, the length of the shoot and radical and their impact on the growth. Mm, let's talk about the biological properties of the growing major. So in here, I would like to talk about the stability, the rate of biodegradability, and the presence of weed seeds, pathogens, and pest preness, and the disease suppression ability. These are the biological properties of the growing medium, and how these uh, properties will affect from the addition of biochar into a growing medium. So, first, I would like to talk about the stability effect of addition of biochar into a growing medium. So, in order to assess the stability, we can use as an indicator of the uh, as we can use the oxygen uptake rate as an indicator. Uh, it will measure the biodegradation under the uh, ideal conditions. So, in here, you can see the, the different type of organic matter we can use in the uh, as a growing medium and their oxygen uptake rates. So here you can see compared to the uh, peat, the all the other uh, organic matter types have a really high uh, oxygen uptake rate. It may it has a really high respiration rate, and it may it uh, symbolize the higher biodegradation. So compared to the other growing materi materials, especially this biosure and peat has a, a lower biodegradation. So this may be useful to reduce the emission related in the horticulture and also to keep the stability over the, uh, of the growing medium over the growing cycles. And in here, I would like to see how addition of biosure impact the synergies between the beneficial microorganisms uh, in a growing medium. So in this study, they showed how uh, briscular microorganisms presents and in a biochar added medium and how it will um, perform when the salt is present is present so biochar together with this uh, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi inoculation resulted in an addition of plant yield increase uh, especially compared to the uh, each alone under non-saline conditions especially in here so 
Bayesha elevated the salinity cross growth depression. So it means Bayesha can be um, used to uh, avoid the salinity relation repressions and it also have a good synergistic effect with the beneficial microorganisms. Uh, in this slide, I would like to talking about the uh, disease resistance after addition of Bayesha into a growing medium. So in this study, they showed how this is this is resistance for the lettuce and in for the uh, strawberry, uh, especially uh, regarding to the lesions of the Raxoctonia soloni on lettuce and the Abbott reducing area on the strawberry using a disease scale of zero to four. And you can see in the lettuce bioassay. In here, the biochar addition had uh, no much effect on the crop health. However, in this, this strawberry bioassay, the addition of this 3% of biochar to keep research in the lower susceptibility for the fungal pathogen, but raises in area on both leaves and the fruits. So in this context, we can say that biochar, addition of biochar to grow medium have an effect on the disease depression. Um, however, I found another study which uh, they say that the lower concentration of Bayesha often suppresses the level of the uh, uh, several diseases. However, in the higher Bayesha concentrations, it will be a bit ineffective in the uh, plant disease suppression. So you have to uh, carefully select the Bayesha and Bayesha properties, especially the chemical properties, and test before you sit in your uh, growth media. Uh, then we talk when we talk about the phytotoxicity. Uh, it can be due to various reasons, due to pH or, or especially the salinity, the presence of high amount of K plus ions, and also the soluble phytotoxic compounds and the volatile organic compounds associated with the Bayer post handling. So in here you can see. Uh, how press that you send tomato uh, in different uh, P10 Bayesha growing medium uh, combinations, how they perform very well, perform uh, for the germination percentage. And in here for let for press, uh, I couldn't see any um, uh, phytotoxic effect. Also for the that you send tomato, this, uh, the changes were not much significant. However, in some uh, growing medium formulation have uh, performed very well compared to the other growing medium uh, combinations. So with this I would like to go to, the, go to talk about the opportunities and challenges associated with the virtual use in growing mediums. Um, I can list a lot of uh, opportunities. Uh, using of biochar in a growing medium can uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions associated with the horticulture and uh, because due to the stability and high stability and the lower biodegradability and also it will reduce the peat and quail use in the growing medium, which are very uh, associated with the higher grass and greenhouse gas emissions. And also uh, use of peat, as I mentioned before, it will reduce the carbon footprint due to the transportation. And it improves the plant nutrition and reduce the need for fertilizer. And it can maybe improve the nutrient availability by increasing the substrate CAC. And also it can improve the physical properties of the growing medium and increase the pH of the acidic substrates and the decrease the live requirement. And also it can be used to promote the biological activity, especially the mycorrhizal fungi and the disease suppression, as I mentioned before. And it also increases the physical and chemical stability in the substrate. And Currently, Bayesha is producing from the wide uh, range of feedstock material. So you can use the waste material to produce Bayesha. And also this may be helped to the peak land restoration. And also you can use the, uh, this char after application in growing medium in order to have to generate energy or uh, maybe in the subsequent growing cycle. Uh, also, there are some challenges associated with growing medium. Uh, first one is the dust. It may be make a lot of handling issues, and also the contaminants. The feedstock you use in the grow to produce biochar uh, should be responsibly sourced material. Otherwise, it may be uh, introduce a lot of contaminants into your growing medium. And also, there can be a lot of economic issues due to this operating operating cost associated with the biochar production. So, in here, in order to overcome this problem, maybe you can go to the integrated biochar system. And also, it can have some uh, interaction with the 
nitrogen because that's a high CN material. Maybe in the uh, in the beginning of the growth cycle, it maybe can have some nitrogen immobilization. So maybe if you are using this high CN material in growing medium, you have to use the nitrogen fertilizer with that. Also, the continuous supply of feedstock material. You have to make sure there is a continuous supply of the feedstock material to produce biochar and it should be available. And when you use the biochar in growing medium, you have to keep up, keep it up the um, keep up, keep the consistency throughout the growing cycles. And also, uh, farmers' attitudes also a big challenge because when you are using for a uh, good quality material uh, for a long time it's not easy to uh, change the, uh, the the type of the growing medium very easily so it also a little bit a problem so thank you very much for listening to this presentation so if you have any question please type thank you very much